Good morning. Well, last night we uh, I quit just as the sun was going down. Everything was getting pretty gummy. I'm guessing the frost isn't out of the ground yet. So as it cools off at night or as the sun goes down, that frost typically comes up, makes that moisture, brings that moisture up. And uh, well, for me on this unit, makes it a little bit, uh, things don't work as well. So we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna see if we can get this uh, unit rolling today. And I'll check my runs while everything's warming up. That's good. Hopefully it, uh, it works. All right, I've done about 30, 30 acres so far, and I've been out here for just under an hour. I've had a few uh, issues with uh, my discs doing what it did last night, uh, but now it seems, cross my fingers, that we're kind of out of that. morning. Kendall's out uh, seeding oats again. He's trying to finish up that second field. I was able to check the uh, next field for him and it's definitely good to go as well. So he's going to keep picking away at that and uh, Dylan and I first thing this morning are going to get the barn ready for what we're doing and Peter's just getting fertilizer. So um, what the three of us will be doing this morning is we have got um, uh, Dr. David Hamilton coming out and he will be putting embryos in some of our cows. So that is what our plan is for the day. We've got 23 that we, no, sorry, 20 that synced up nicely and we have uh, two more that came into natural heat. So we're hoping that uh, we've got 22 that we can put embryos in here today. So that is the up and coming short plan for the day. So we just got to get things ready here and we'll go from there. Yeah, I've got a three day road trip. So you do, you go, all, you, you go, you're placing embryos in Saskatchewan. Okay. Yeah, I go there about every two weeks for three or four days or so. Yeah, I've got quite a few there. Wow. Some of the big players like working put a lot of embryos in there. They're one of the most successful eggs operations in Canada. Okay. Yeah. They're at Radville. Are you doing Radville? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right here with Gary. Yes, yeah, he's, they're neighbors of Gary's. Okay. Gary does some grinding for him. Okay. Yeah, last year when I was out there, Gary brought the embryos. Right, that's how we did that all. Two broken. Yeah, that's right. How do you say that? Well, as far as I know, Gary was switching your protocol for everything this year. These are the things he tells me. Well, it's a little simpler, but I think it. it uh, you can use the cedars. You can probably get more to line up, but sometimes the pressure rate's not as good. Oh, and a lot of this for commercial guys like yourself, you don't. You don't want to make it too complicated or you'll say to heck with it. Right. You know, yep. Yep. It's easy to put the bowls out or whatever. So yep. That's part of it, but part of it is just that uh, 
that they truly do show a heat. Like some of them just do what's called fixed time, but they don't even worry about heats. They just give them out a protocol, and if they have a CLD in the plant. Okay. But sometimes, probably 50 to 20% of the time, you might be wasting your time. That cell wasn't a heat at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, she's good. She's good. She's good. So Dylan, yeah. wild card's gonna get an Angus. Yeah. Just so that you know. Can you push him right out the car? Oh. <laughs> She's looking for a calf probably. Are you having all done? Yeah, I think we have four stragglers. Uh, we got three. They eyeing our heifers this weekend, so there's a slight chance that they uh, maybe. Maybe it's. Okay, so the last one up is uh, Parker's 82H, and she is good. We've had two cows that we were not able to use. So out of the original 23, we had three that did not come into heat. We found two that came into natural heat, so that brought us to 20. Sorry, we got down to 20. We added two natural heats, and now we're minusing two more. So we're at 20 that we will be embryo breeding. So the last one. Well, that is field number two. That's a wrap. All right, we are rolling. We're on the next field. This is soybean stubble. The last two fields have been canola. So I'll take, once I get rolling, get off the headlands, I'll check my depth. Hopefully everything is good. I did a quick check now and it looks good. But uh, I am loaded with fuel, with seed, fertilizer. At 240 acres here. It isn't quite lunch, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, we can have a good run at this yet today and see what we can get done. They are calling for rain tonight and tomorrow. So if we can get this field done, and I got another 80 acres, and then oats is actually done. That would be awesome. If we could get the oats done, that means when it's raining, we can uh, switch everything over to wheat. That would be, uh, yeah, that would be handy. That would be good. Creating some dust. We're not having a problem hitting moisture. Again, that's normally not an issue for us, but uh, especially when we're starting seeding. But this field is smooth, really smooth. didn't realize how lucky they were until right now. They get to go out for a try. Man, is that lucky. Yep, out you go. We're gonna come back, maybe not tomorrow, but it ain't gonna day long, and all that mud's gonna be off their feet. And they're gonna love it. Hey bud, come on. So that's our blue roan yearling bull. He's running in here with Knox. Other than that, here we go. This is just more of a walk through the cows and we'll see the calves. Because you won't hear much of what I say anyway.
Hey. Well, it is going good. <clears throat> Sitting in the, right around half done this field. We got 120 acres done, and I noticed that my uh, on my iPad my numbers are going up. I've been having issues in the past where if there's lots of chaff, uh, we actually my screen on the on the air cart gets plugged, and then I'm not sending enough uh, fan speed, enough air down air down the lines so we're gonna go take a check take a look and see what we can find I always bring my handy dandy my homemade tool I made that helps me clean out scrapers if I have any oh, the fan is almost right plugged in the moisture. I checked it in some other spots and we were right around that inch a little bit deeper. So I like to aim for right around an inch, especially if I especially if I know that uh, if rain is coming. But uh, we're also hitting moisture at one inch. So for that we are fortunate, we are lucky. I know there are other areas that guys are not able to hit my shoe, so that is not fun. Turn my GPS on. ready to go that was quick eh we moved fast and if all goes well or continues to go we'll be able to pull into our last 80 acres after this field is done guys i got 100 left just keep going i'll come behind I got 
112 acres left in this field. And we got another 80 acres just down the road. So yeah. It's always handy too if uh, if we can do all of our oats in one shot and then switch over to wheat, then we're not cleaning out or anything, it's just oats, then we'll do all our wheat, then we'll get canola, and then the forage, so. Well, perfect timing, it's supper time. Jumping or me? Oh. All right. Got my supper. I'm going to clean my fan off. I'm down to under 50 acres left on this field. Yeah, it says I got 44 acres left. I got four and a half up and downs. At three quarters of a mile. It's five o'clock. I was hoping to be done by six, so we'll see. Supper gets brought on in a grocery bag. Because my lunch was brought out in my lunch box and I didn't get it back. So I'm lucky, I'm spoiled, I know. We have some garlic toast and all right I got no idea but I'm thinking it's gonna be awesome lasagna salad and corn right on something that me and Daryl have been uh, very fortunate uh, my mom always cooked a good meal when we were young out in the field, no matter uh, harvest seeding, and uh, both Heather and Lindsay have carried that on very well. Um, yeah, we are very lucky to get them to make us uh, awesome food that keeps us going. Uh, they feed Peter and any other hired guys that during harvest. We've got other guys working for us, and they get fed this too. So, um, yeah. No complaints on the food department, that's for sure. We, uh, like I said, both Heather and Lindsay, they, uh, they take turns feeding during harvest. During seeding time, it's more of uh, Lindsay takes care of me, Heather takes care of Daryl, and then they take uh, turns feeding Peter whenever. So, yeah. Alright, that's a wrap. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have yourself a good one.